Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to the GPT Infra Projects Limited earnings conference call for the second quarter and half year ended September 30th, 2023. With festivities in the air, I extend my warm wishes to everyone on the call today. The results presentation, along with our press release, has already been uploaded on the company's website and that of the stock exchanges. We hope you have had a chance to go through the same. Today on the call, we also have with us Stellar IR, our Investor Relations Advisors. I'm glad to announce that the second quarter and the first half of FY 2024 has been a remarkable quarter for the company. Given that generally the second quarter is one of the weakest for any infrastructure company, however, if you compare a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, we are almost flat, and we have achieved a 53% growth on a year-on-year -year basis. The strong quarterly performance is on all parameters, that is revenue, EBITDA, PAT, and cash flow. This achievement is attributable to our strong execution capabilities and a steady focus on cash flow. Now moving to the financial numbers for the second quarter and half year ended FY 2024. Our revenues for Q2 FY 24 were rupees 225 crores on a standalone basis which compared with rupees 151 crores last year, representing a growth of 49% year on year. On a consolidated basis, the revenues stood at rupees 235 crores compared to 153 crores for the last year, representing a growth of 53% year on year. On a half year basis, the revenues were rupees 464 crores on a standalone basis, which were higher by 37% on a year on year basis as compared to rupees 339 crores last year. On a consolidated basis, the revenue stood at rupees 474 crores compared to rupees 342 crores last year with a growth of rupees 39 uh, with a growth of 39% year on year. In both the standalone and the consolidated numbers, we have set the target of 25% growth this year and we are very confident of achieving the same. This uh, growth will majorly be driven by significant execution in the infrastructure segment which accounted for approximately 89% of our total revenues. Our standalone EBITDA for the quarter stood at rupees 27 crores compared to rupees 20 crores, representing a growth of 39% year on year. And EBITDA for the half year was rupees 60 crores compared to rupees 44 crores last year. That is a growth of 35%. In terms of consolidated EBITDA, the same came in at rupees 32 crores for the quarter compared to rupees 21 crores last year representing a growth of 58%, and EBITDA for the half year stood at rupees 62 crores comparing, compared to rupees 43 crores on a consolidated basis last year, representing a growth of 44%. We are quite confident of maintaining our long-term EBITDA margin of 12 to 13% from the operations, which we have guided historically. With the improvement in revenue, the operational efficiencies have helped us ensure long-term EBITDA is met, and we expect the same to be maintained going forward as well. The company has declared an interim dividend of Rs. 1 per share. The record date of the same has been fixed on November 24, 2023, maintaining our dividend policies of rewarding shareholders. The balance, in terms of balance sheet, the management continues its strong focus on cash flow and its rebirth while ensuring that the projects achieve the hurdle rate a bit of 12 to 13%, which has led their us to report strong numbers over the last three years. Our cash flow to a bit of conversion remains strong and is will and will be one of the highest for the industry and especially this year on account of the receipt of arbitration receivables we expect it to cross 100% and thus providing comfortable liquidity for the operations the bank limit continue to be uh, utilized uh, south of 85% thus enabling the operations to go on smoothly we have available facilities for issuing performance surety bonds from insurance companies for the new projects awarded to us, being the first company in the country to do so. Furthermore, our balance sheet is becoming more deleveraged, with operating cash flows being much, much stronger. Now, coming to our segmental performance, our infrastructure segment demonstrates strong execution prowess with a remarkable 37% increase in revenue compared uh, reaching to uh, rupees 210 crores for the quarter ended uh, 30 September 2023. This segment continues to be the backbone of our business, contributing almost 89% of our total revenues for the quarter. Regarding the sleeper segment, 
the same generated revenue of rupees 24 crores in second quarter of FY24, despite completion of the contract for the delegate credit corridor. And we, uh, we anticipate the increase in momentum in the sleeper segments will, uh, will be backed by the commencement of the operations in South Africa. We expect this segment to contribute 10 to 12 percent of the annual revenues for the full year as well, especially with the Ghana operations uh, also contributing uh, revenues in the fourth quarter uh, once the product is approved by the local railways. The key contracts for the infrastructure segment continue to be performed well with contracts like Prayagraj, Ghazipur, Mathura Jansi, Nimtita, Baigara driving a major part of the revenues. In terms of the order book, for, FI, for the second quarter, we have achieved the highest order book of uh, rupees 2877 crores, which is the unexecuted order book, due to the uh, order inflows of rupees 1,117 crores during the year, which is, represents almost 3.6 times our FY23 revenues, providing strong visibility to the management. Recently, we have backed the largest order, largest single order in the history of the company for rupees 739 crores from NHAI for construction of a new four-lane Tehagra 7 bypass on NH17 in the state of Uttar Pradesh under the Bharat Mala contract on the EPC basis. This is uh, a major part of the uh, contract is for the construction of a bridge uh, over the Sangam in Allahabad. It is worth mentioning that this order book, re order book represents one of the highest in the company's history. To enhance profitability, we have implemented key measures such as optimizing working capital and reducing outstanding with various customers. We continue to be positive given by a strong outstanding order book, improving financial conditions, uh, including stronger cash flows and lower debt position as a result of a reduction in the receivables. We have already mentioned to you about the setting up of the factory in Ghana with a capacity of 240,000 sleepers. The factory has already been commissioned and the product is awaiting the final approval from the railways, post which the revenues will start to be booked. The South African business is back on track, with revenues uh, increasing by 138% on a year-on-year -year basis. As we have indicated in the previous call as well, we are glad to inform you that our company has settled the long-pending arbitration uh, disputes with two customers under the Vivasa Vishwas scheme, contractual dispute scheme of the Government of India, which were uh, in, uh, in which we applied during the previous quarter and the pending disposals have been mutually settled between the customer and the, com and the company's subsidiary Rupi Joint Venture. The customers have also withdrawn the cases from the courts. We expect to receive the cash uh, from these customers by 31st December 2023. We are very thankful to the government for bringing out such a scheme which will ensure that the old disputes across the industry are settled and will provide much required cash flow for all the companies. Industrial updates. As we navigate the challenges presented globally, we are continuing discovering our sources of strength and resilience. To boost freight flow and add passenger trains, the Indian Railways have suggested a massive plan to invest 4 lakh crores on multi-track 7 high-density corridors. The program has been spread over a period of 10 years from 2024-25 to 2033-34, in addition to doubling and laying third and fourth lines on various sections throughout the course for the next 10 years. The main objective is to make these corridors currently for carrying 41% of the Indian Railway's total railway traffic more capable of handling additional trains, especially with the uh, advent of the Vande Bharat passenger and the Vande Bharat sleeper trains as well. I would like to reiterate that in Q2 FY24, we secured orders of 1,017 crores for the first half, including incremental orders from existing contracts. As of Q2 FY 2024, our unexecuted order book remains at Rs. 2877 crores, which is approximately 3.6 times our FY23 revenues, providing excellent growth visibility for the management. With strong execution on the back of the largest order book in the history of the company, we are on track to cross 1,000 crores in revenues this year and expect to maintain the growth momentum going forward as well. We remain positive for the future prospects of the company and improving financials led by improving cash flows and reduction in debt position due to better operating cash flows, which we believe will position us for the higher growth trajectory in the coming quarters. As I've already mentioned earlier, we are bidding for orders up to Rs. 1,000 
crores single orders and we are expanding our potential opportunities for the growing infrastructure segment in India. This testimony of the same lies in the receipt of the largest single order received by the company of Rs. 739 crores in the last month. As we have started our fiscal year 2024 on with a strong performance, we expect to maintain the same going forward as well with the guidance of 25% growth in revenues and 50% growth in profit for the full year. Thank you, everyone, and we look forward to addressing any questions or concerns you might be having with respect to our financial performance and future prospects. I will now request the moderator to kindly open the floor to any questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. The first question is from the line of Sudhir Veda from Veda Family Offices. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and uh, heartiest congratulations for the outstanding set of numbers uh, with the kind of margin and growth you have uh, done. It's uh, amazing, sir. So, congratulations on that. Thank uh, you. Uh, so, uh, my question is, uh, as we have grown by almost 35% in first half, so the same momentum is likely to continue for the second half as well? So, uh, just to correct you, we have uh, grown, uh, this momentum is expected to be 25% for the full year, which is, mm -hmm. like I've said in my opening remarks as well, and we expect to uh, maintain across 1,000 flows for the full year. So, that means second half would be a kind of growth, 15%, because 35% we have already grown. So, to get the average of 25%, uh, our growth would be like uh, muted in the second half. Is it a right understanding? Mm -hmm. It's not muted per se. It means, uh, it means uh, I think on an average we will be uh, so second half we will achieve almost five uh, close to uh, six hundred crores of revenue. So which mm -hmm. I think last year we achieved uh, about five hundred uh, odd crores. So it's almost twenty percent, close to twenty percent, eighteen to twenty percent crores. Mm -hmm. And uh, second factory uh, at Ghana. Uh, which is going to be start in the second half, maybe in the last quarter or so. So what kind of revenue that can generate for the full year if we project it for the next year? So that will generate a revenue of almost uh, 60-65 crores for the full year. Great. And sir, other pipeline, if you can throw light on... Uh, the bidding pipeline or order pipeline, which uh, you are... Uh, so, we have an unexecuted order book of almost 2877 uh, crores, and we are L1 in further almost 200 crores of order. Okay, great. Thanks for the opportunity, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Parth Kotak from Alpha Plus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Atul, sir. Congratulations on a splendid set of numbers. Uh, I don't mean to pry, but uh, as my previous participation, uh, uh, probably, uh, you know, with all infra companies, probably second half is slightly stronger than the first half. Uh, by that means, uh, do we not see our revenues coming in slightly stronger and more than what we are guiding for? So we had earlier guided for 20% growth for the full year, which we have bumped up to 25% uh, for the full year. So um, I think that these 
might exceed that revenue, honestly, but uh, that number, honestly. But uh, we will be anywhere between 25 to 30 percent for the full year. But uh, uh, like I said, we expect to be in the range of about thousand, thousand plus. So it'll be almost thousand fifty, close to thousand fifty for the full year. Thousand fifty does mean um, almost uh, uh, close to 29 percent growth. But 25 percent is something that is we think that is quite will be done and. We have a target set internally for almost a 30%. So if it's if we do achieve 30%, then still for the second half it will be going in 22 to 25%. Perfect, sir. That helps a lot. Uh, so secondly, I think the arbitration receipt was supposed to be received in October. Has there been a slight delay? And if that's the case, do would there be a, a chance that there would be further delay in receipt of this arbitrage? So the arbitration uh, receivable was not expected to be received in October. It was expected to be received by December 2023. We have always settled the arbitration award and the agreements have been signed. The uh, cases from the court have been withdrawn by NHI and Aircon respectively and by us as well. Uh, the uh, expectation is that one of them will be, uh, be received in this month itself, that is November. The second one could be November end or early December. Okay, perfect, sir. Uh, so just one last question, uh, probably not so much on the fundamentals. Uh, I think the, the market realizes our uh, pricing and market cap is slightly out of sync with our fundamental performance, uh, which is sort of being hindered by the ESM mechanism, which is being uh, implemented by the exchanges. Um, any view on when we would be out of the ESM uh, mechanism? I think uh, someone in the exchange can only answer. I have no idea, and we do not uh, honestly uh, can uh, help it to get out. The exchanges have their own criteria and filters to put companies in and out of the ESM mechanism. I hope that it is done earlier rather than later. So that's the only thing I can say on it. Okay, sir. That's all from my side and wish you all the best for the quarters to come. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Anish Mehta from Donga and Associates. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, congratulations on the number, excellent numbers. My question is related to arbitration award, which is declared, settled and declared in the name of the company. So how it has been reflected in the PNL for the quarter ended 23, September 23. It has on the balance sheet as on 30th September 23. So, so the uh, arbitration receivable has been uh, reflected in the PNL of the quarter ended September 30th, uh, 2023. Uh, and the assets that we were carrying in terms of the work in progress and inventories, etc., they have accordingly been also expensed out. So uh, they have been the PNL has been adjusted towards uh, the ambition receivable. Okay, so uh, this revenue has been recognized as of now, or it was earlier recorded. Revenue uh, is revenue so as per the accounting policy revenue is recognized net of the uh, what do you call the arbitration uh, the carrying value of the investment or uh, carrying value of the inventory and the work in progress on the contract assets so okay. it, it has been netted off the revenue recognized is not a significant amount it is quite a small amount about uh, five odd crores for the subsidy. So, uh, again, to clarify, the obligation has been settled not by the company, but the company's subsidiary and joint operation. The company has not done it. Okay, so in the balance sheet which has been provided for the uh, 31st March 23, there were uh, disputed trade receivables considered good. So, it was, this amount was been impacted here, 438.04 crores, right? No, no, the disputed trade receivables is not 438 crores. Uh, I don't know where you're getting that number from. Disputed trade receivables is much, much lower. Four no, 438 crores is not our total receivable as well. No, in the um, annual report which was been provided, uh, it is 438.4 crores disputed trade receivables considered good. 
स्टैंड अलोन नंबर्स 4.38 करोड़ सॉरी हाँ से दैट यू सी फोर थर्टी एट क्रोज आई एम गेटिंग कंफ्यूज सो आउट ऑफ सो दैट पार्ट ऑफ दैट हैज बीन रियलाइज एंड वन मोर फ्रॉम द कानपुर डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी स्टिल पेंडिंग देर इज ऑडिट रिपोर्ट इज वेल ओके सो दिस सेवेंटी क्रोर्स विच इज द नंबर विच वी हैव सेटल वेर इट वॉज एंड हाउ मच इट इज बीन राइट ऑफ एज ऑफ नाउ सो सेवेंटी क्रोर्स इज नॉट द नंबर दैट we will get the subsidy and the joint operation is that our share is 74% in terms of the contract with nhai and 57% in the in terms of the contract with uh, ircom so if i were to total both of them we would uh, get uh, close to 50 crores out of the 50 crores the balance the uh, the this this number is there In terms of the consolidated balance sheet and the trade receivables at the moment for the September balance sheet. So uh, it means if, since we have not received the money, it has not been impacted in the balance sheet. We have not written right, on right. Write it off. It, that fifty crores is coming as a as a balance sheet number for from the receivable from the customer. It is uh, in the current uh, assets and um, the corresponding inventories and all that have been written off in the PLN. Okay. So, do you have exact numbers? How much of the seventy crores is recognized as revenue in the current quarter, and how much has been write-off? So there is no write-off per se of any of the receivables. The earlier receivable was uh, the earlier we were carrying it as an inventory. So the revenue that is recognized is net of the inventories. So that's what I'm telling you. Okay. The revenue for the subsidy that has been recognized is about four point eight crores. Four point eight crores. Revenue, okay. The net of the uh, carrying value of the uh, in subsidies, uh, exp- uh, inventory, and uh, other expenses. Okay. So, seventy crores is total which we will be receiving, no, right? No, 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 no. Seventy crores not total. We receive fifty crores, like I said. Seventy crores is. Not our share. Seventy crores is the total amount of money. Our share is fifty fifty. Okay. Our share is fifty crores. This is seventy four percent of the NHI receivable of fifty nine crores, and fifty seven percent of the Aircon receivable, which is eleven point seven seven crores. So total, our share is about fifty crores. Seventy crores is overall received received from the customer. Okay. So out of the fifty, four point eight crores is out of the fifty crores, right? Correct. Okay. And balance will be adjusted against the on uh, on that inventory and all, right? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, net of the carrying value of the inventory and other contract assets, which includes the work in progress, etc. Okay. The, the the revenue recognized in subsidies four point eight four point eight four point eight five crores close to that. Yes. Okay. So four point eight crores is our share, right? Or total? It is our share. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Participants are requested that you may press star and one to ask questions. We would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Sudhir Beda from Beda Family Office. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, just wanted to ask sir about the margin trajectory. As a long term, you have already stated 12 and 13, 12 to 13 percent is the range where we can expect a long term uh, margin, a sustainable margin. But uh, if you see really, we have closed around 13.75 percent uh, margin for the first half. So this kind of margin, at least in a year or so, it will continue, or how it is, or it was some, uh, it will taper off. No, for a year or so, it will continue because the Ghana operations will have a higher margin. 
So I think this kind of margin will continue for a year or so. But uh, the long term, like I've said, will be in the 12 to 13 percent range. But uh, for a year, especially with EPC contracts, the larger EPC contracts, that's the range in the industry. But uh, for the next year to two years, because of the Ghana operations and uh, uh, what do you call the margins for that subsidy, we should get that uh, 13 and a half to 14 percent range. Okay. And sir, one more question. Uh, if I actually uh, listen to your commentary, you have stated that uh, for the entire year, cash conversion to EBITDA would be around 100%. So is it the right mm -hmm. understanding? Cash, con cash from operations to EBITDA will be north of 100%, especially because of the receipt of these arbitration receivables. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity and all the best. Thank you. Thank you are doing really great work. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Sin from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so in uh, earlier calls and press releases, we have mentioned that uh, we'll be expecting 100, uh, 1,500 crores of order inflows this year, and we have already done more than 1,000 crores. So in H2, uh, are we still expecting around roughly 600 crores of inflows? or it should be more than that? So like I said in one of the earlier questions, we are L2, uh, sorry, L1 in almost 200 crores of new orders. Yeah. So H2, we should get, especially with elections around the corner, we should get close to 800 to 1,000 crores of new orders. So we will, I think, cross the 1,600 crore target that we had set for the year. All right, that's great. And uh, we are growing 25% this year in terms of revenue. So, same trajectory for FY25-26? For FY25, yes, but I think FY26, again, it depends on how the order book plays out. Obviously, there is a major event that is the elections, but I think that uh, well, we should grow around the 20 to 25% mark in the next five years as well. All right. Thank you. That is my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Dheeraj Sardev from Roha Asset Manager. Please go ahead. I just wanted to know what is the uh, margin difference between Ghana and, uh, and the EPC contracts that you do domestically and, and also since our NHCI mix is also increasing. Is it, uh, are you confident of maintaining these margins and, and cash flows on the working capital side? Sure. So the Ghana, the margin is close to 27, 28%. And that is also, we have also achieved that earlier in Namibia as well. In, it's, uh, in the African market generally it's north of 20% for our South Africa business also. In terms of uh, whether we can maintain this uh, long-term EBITDA of 12 to 13% due to NHAI and other larger contracts. So, like I said again to the previous caller, because of uh, the Ghana uh, operations next year, we would be around the 135 to 13.75% margin. But long-term, we see it in the 12 to 13% range. So, we were earlier doing maybe around 13%. Now, we're saying because of the larger contracts, we will do about... 12 to 13 percent range. But having said that, uh, with the reduction in interest expense and uh, the PAT margin will be higher than what it was uh, historically. Yeah, um, but then since the mix is also changing, um, and we have seen a lot of EPC players with larger contract sizes having stresses in the past, what is the threshold for accepting an order? Uh, what is the due diligence and risk management practices internally that you adopt for taking or not taking the order? Because at the end of the day, it's a tender business, competitive business, but uh, it can dilute your cash flow, it can dilute your ROC. So if you can just elaborate on the management strategy on the order quality intakes rather than just building up the order book. No, no, we are never interested in just building up the order book. We are, we don't like to do that ever. So one of the Key filters is A, we like to see the line of funding and we do mostly central government contracts. When I say mostly, it's almost 90 to 95% of central government funded contracts or multilateral funded contracts. 
these contracts are generally with the railways or uh, this uh, or NHI or MORTH. We are or railway. When I say railways, also railway PSUs like RBA and Ircon and others. And these contracts generally have the land available so that the uh, contracts can go on smoothly. And we are very, very disciplined in terms of our bidding strategy that we want to maintain that kind of a beta margin. So we do build in some contingencies as well so that when we are able to uh, execute the contracts, uh, we are able to deliver these uh, 12 to 13 percent EBITDA range. And if you see our decadal EBITDA, it has been always north of 13 percent, which shows the discipline of the management. We have a strong... Uh, audit committee as well as an in, in, a fully independent audit committee which monitors the margins on a quarterly basis and does uh, discuss the same with the statutory auditors which is BDO, uh, that is MSK and Associates and they do review the uh, budgeted margins for the, by the management and how we are tracking against the actual margins and we have seen that we have tracked quite close to the budgeted margin which is 12 to 13 percent historically. No, again, my question is only partly answered on the margins. You mentioned about committee doing due diligence on margins of 13% on the new orders. Uh, my role is, my, my question is extended not only to margins, but also on the working capital and cash flow side. So, ROCs, how do you intend to maintain beyond 14, 15, 16%? Uh, so, ROC should evaluate not, uh, it should evaluate not just the margin part, but also on the orders and the milestone payments and the ROCs effectively speaking, rather than just accrual profits. Uh, no, no, so uh, you can that part. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, in terms of ROC, we have always been uh, targeting that our cash flows would be, cash flow to EBITDA would be north of 90%. So, if our cash flow to EBITDA is north of 90%, which I don't think many people in the industry can claim, that really speaks on the return ratios that we can deliver. Uh, our... our long-term target for ROC is 80 to 20 percent and we expect to maintain that as well. Uh, we are and we have a good different policy as well. So ROE might seem a little depressed in terms of the uh, optically but I think because if you are just for dividend we slightly higher. Okay that's that's good. So we are evaluating uh, beyond just margins on the... Yeah yeah so we see ca we, we, so we always believe cash flow is king and uh, Cash flow is something that we should always uh, factor in when we are bidding for contracts. We do a full cash flow analysis, and uh, then only we do bid for contracts. So just an example, this Prayagraj order of uh, Southern Bypass 739 crore will meet your criteria of 90% uh, EBITDA to cash flow conversion? So it can be a, what do you call, uh, uh, what do you call, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, it can be slightly skewed because initially there will be a lot of investment that will happen towards the contract and it might be due to like the milestone payments, etc. It might not deliver, but the 90% mark. But I think that uh, after the second or the third quarter, we'll start achieving that 90% uh, mark. Yeah, that is understandable. That, that's given. So, so what is the execution time cycle for this project, let's say? Uh, 30 months. Okay, so over a period of 30 months is when you're saying a better to cash to can become 90 percent even for this project. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And over this. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Anish Mehta from Donga and Associates. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity once again. Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, you said, sir, earlier uh, we are around 74% holding in Jogbani Highway Private Limited. So, sir, can you uh, uh, tell me what who is the other party? Balance 26%. So, so there's a other party called RDS Project Limited. That is that was the qualification RDS. criteria. Yes. Not RDX, RDS. RDS, okay. So the, that was a qualification criteria when we had bid for the contract in 2010-11. Okay. Uh, the, so they are the other parts to the uh, to the sub to the uh, what is the subsidiary. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. A kind reminder to participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. If you would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Atul Tantia for closing comments. Thank you everyone for your questions, which I hope I've been able to suitably address. In case you have any other further questions, do please get in touch with Stellar IR or directly with us. I wish you a very Shubh Dipavali and hope that the coming year will be prosperous and successful for you and your family. Thank you and have a good day. On behalf of GPT Infra Projects, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.